Hello guys, welcome back for another virtual instruction on quarter 1, week 7 with learning competency, proves rational root theorem. Our topic for today is we have the rational root theorem. This is Mr. Frederick M. Alvarez from Cabarwan National High School. What is rational root theorem? If p of x is a polynomial with integer coefficients, and if p over q is a zero of polynomial function, p of p over q is equal to zero, then p is a factor of the constant term of the polynomial function, and q is a factor of the leading coefficient of the polynomial function. Here are the steps in finding the rational roots of a polynomial. First, arrange the polynomial in descending order. So when we say descending order, the highest uh, exponent or the term with the highest exponent must be our first term and the constant term will be the last. So this is our descending order. x cubed plus x squared minus 8x minus 12. Our second step is to write down all the factors of the constant term. These are all the possible values of p. In this polynomial, negative 12 is our constant term, and it is also our p. So p is equal to negative 12, and the factors are 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, 4, negative 4, 6, negative 6, 12, and negative 12. So these are the possible values of P. Third step is to write down all the factors of the leading coefficient. These are all the possible values of Q. So using the same equation or polynomial, 1 is our leading coefficient. So, Q is equal to 1, and the factors of 1 are 1 and negative 1. So, these also are the possible values of Q. The first step is to write down all the possible values of P over Q. Remember that since factors can be negative, P over Q and negative P over Q must both be included. Simplify each value and cross out any duplicates. So using the previous example, so our p is equal to 12 and these are the possible values of p. Where q is equal to 1 and 1 and negative 1 are the possible values of q. To find p over q, we are going to divide the value of p by the value of q. So we have 1 divided by 1 is 1, negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1, 2 divided by 1 is 2, negative 2 divided by 1 is negative 2, 3 divided by 1 is 3, negative 3 divided by 1 is negative 3, 4 divided by 1 is 4, negative 4 divided by 1 is negative 4, 6 divided by 1 is 6, negative 6 divided by 1 is 6, a negative 6 rather, 12 divided by 1 is 12, and negative 12 divided by 1 is negative 12. Now, if we divide P by Q using negative 1, you will notice that there will be duplicates. Example, 1 divided by negative 1 is say, the same as negative 1. Negative 1 divided by negative 1 is 1. 2 divided by negative 1 is also negative 2. So, if we continue that one, these are the possible values of uh, the rational roots. Or these are the list of possible rational roots. Let's have our first example. Find all the roots or zeros of the polynomial function x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 2. Where 2 here is our p and understood we have one here and that is our q 
So P is equal to 2 and the possible values of P are 1, negative 1, 2 and negative 2. And our cube is equal to 1 and the values are 1 and negative 1. To find P over Q, we just divide the value of P by the value of Q. So we have 1 divided by 1, 1 divi a negative 1 divided by 1, 2 divided by 1, negative 2 divided by 1, 1 divided by negative 1, negative 1 divided by negative 1, 2 divided by negative 1, and negative 2 divided by negative 1. Then we simplify. So we have 1 divided by 1 is 1. So we have 1 negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1. 2 divided by 1 is 2. Negative 2 divided by 1 is negative 2. Then if you notice, 1 divided by negative 1 is the same as negative 1 here. One, negative 1 divided by negative 1 is positive 1. 2 divided by negative 1 is also negative 2. So we have negative 2 divided by negative 1 is positive 2. So we only have 4 possible rational roots or zeros. Let's proceed. So let us use the polynomial function and we have to equate it with 0. So if we use positive 1 as our first value or possible rational root, so the result will be equal to 0. If we use negative or positive 2, then it is also equal to 0. And then if we use negative 1, substitute it to our function, and the result is also 0. While if we use negative 2, it is equal to 4. It means, therefore, that the rational roots or zeros of that polynomial function are 1, negative 1, and 2. Let's now have our example number 2. Find all the roots or zeros of the polynomial function 2x cubed minus x squared minus 5x minus 2, where p is equal to negative 2, and the possible values for p are 1, negative 1, 2, and negative 2. And for our q, which is equal to 2, the possible values are 1, negative 1, 2, and negative 2. For our p over q, so we have these possible rational roots or zeros by dividing p, the values of p by the values of q. To find the rational roots or zeros, the value of the function must be equal to 0. Let's now have our solution by substituting the possible values of rational roots or zeros to our function. Now, you notice that 2, negative 1, and negative 1 half are all equal to 0. This means that the rational roots or zeros of the polynomial function are negative 1, 2, and negative 1 half. Let's have our example number 3. Find all the roots or zeros of the polynomial function x cubed minus x squared minus 10x minus 8, where p is equal to negative 8, and the possible values are 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 4, negative 4, 8, and negative 8, while for q, which is equal to 1, the possible values are 1 and negative 1. So for p over q, we have 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 4, negative 4, 8 and negative 8 are the possible rational roots or zeros. Now before we continue, uh, to find the number of rational roots, we refer to the highest exponent of the polynomial. In this example, the highest exponent is 3, so we are looking for 3 rational roots or zeros. I will give you another way of finding the roots or zeros of a function, and that is by synthetic division. 
the first thing that we are going to do is to find one root or zero of the function. Let's try positive 1. And then by using synthetic division, you will notice that the remainder is negative 18. Therefore, P of 1 is uh, equal to negative 18 and 1 is not a root or zero of the function. How about if we try, uh, let's say, negative 1. Let's try negative 1. So by negative 1 as our divisor, the remainder will be equal to 0. So since P of negative 1 is equal to 0, negative 1 is a root or 0 of the function. Now, we have 1, negative 2, and negative 8 as the numerical coefficients of our uh, quotient. Therefore, the quotient is x squared minus 2x minus 8. And then if we factor that trinomial, it is equal to quantity x minus 4 and x plus 2. If we equate each factor with 0, so x is equal to 4 and x is equal to negative 2. So these values are the two remaining roots or missing roots of the polynomial function x cubed minus x squared minus 10x minus 8. Alright guys, thank you and stay tuned for the next virtual instruction.